It is August 10th and I'm going to give you a quick look around my garden and so you can see how things have grown over the past month. I will put links for my past garden tours from 2022 down in the description if you want to see how things have been growing over the past couple months. Things have certainly changed a lot over the past month. The first thing you'll notice is broccoli and the lettuce have since reached its peak, have been harvested and have been removed. We have now planted in more cucumbers and you'll see that we have a few volunteer broccoli seedlings. I'll show you more of those in a minute. Um, but yeah, some of those did go to seed and they volunteered to come up. So they are in the mix. I may remove them. The dill has since come and gone. It's pretty much done. And the tomatoes are now just starting to come on. Not really heavy yet, but they are coming. These are uh, indeterminate variety. And then you'll see over here we have a determinate variety where they're all pretty much coming ripe at the same time so we're about I would say three to five days from harvesting all of these and I think I'm going to replant that area with something else whether it be beets or kale or lettuce I'm not sure but something the bell peppers they, the plants are doing very well however they have not been very prolific so we do have some peppers not a lot there's like three or four of them maybe five but then when I come over here to the jalapeno peppers they have done phenomenal Phenomenal. So just shows you how things change every year. I have not harvested my onions. However, you can see they're starting to fall over. So they are ready to get harvested and dried. Most of these are probably going to get used for salsa. So I won't have any for storage, but it was an excellent experiment. Thrilled with it. We'll definitely be planting more of these next year. And then Beef steak tomatoes, our big gyms are over here, and then just an, another heirloom variety of a paste tomato. So, and you know, it, it looks like uh, August garden is supposed to look. Things are starting to die, and some new things are starting to come. After several replantings, the zucchini finally made it, and it has been producing very well. In fact, there's another one in here all set to get picked for today and we seem to be doing quite well with our harvest here. We do have an animal that keeps coming in and eating off the flowers. I'm not sure who that is, but we do have that problem. And as you can see, that same animal also has been helping itself to my tomatoes. Every year, it seems like we have a different problem with some type of garden pests and it always changes some years it's woodchucks sometimes it's rabbits sometimes it's voles it just every year it's a little bit different and we just try our best it sadly does appear that we are going to lose at least three of our blueberry plants here which is very sad one did make it i spoke to a blueberry expert and he suggested that i put down some aluminum sulfate but the plant, I mean, it's green here, but there's no leaves and I just do not think it's going to survive a winter looking like this. Now, all of those broccoli shoots that we had that were volunteers, I did something with them. I went ahead and pulled them out of the ground and have put them into their own individual, individual containers. I am letting them grow for a little while. This half is broccoli and then I worked on getting some lettuce germinated and that worked. If you followed me over on Instagram, you saw me fighting with getting lettuce to germinate. This is lettuce that we went to let go to seed earlier this year. I was testing its germination rate and obviously it did very well. So we have a lot of, lot of lettuce in the future as well as some more broccoli here. Mary's zinnias that she planted has done very, very well. So she had this, unfortunately, the three herbs that I planted, only one survived. That's a small thyme plant here. We've had such dry weather. Things have not, they haven't grown like they normally do. And let me tell you, this Oli garden bed, amazing. Absolutely thrilled with it. In fact, I told Art I would like to get another two or three for right here to use for the critters because it has produced phenomenally so these guys actually need to get pulled out but my eggplant guys this is let's say three feet two and a half three feet tall 
producing eggplant. It was late to the game. It's already, already got an eggplant. But this banana pepper. Look at the peppers on this. I've already harvested peppers from it. And this is phenomenal. Again, onions need to be harvested. Volunteer tomatoes just got thrown in here. They are doing very, very well. I just, I love that it's raised and the animals are staying out of it. And I think that's why I love it so much is it works out here. It's held up beautifully and the animals are leaving my food alone. <laughs> The vines are producing very bountifully. We've got lots of different um, spaghetti squash, pumpkins, all cool kinds of things in here. I have a zucchiniano that also came in and you can see how big that one is there. This not doing so well. Brussels sprouts are in there. I have not had a chance to weed. Cauliflower didn't do very well. So here are those eggplants I was telling you. Look at the difference. So this, these were actually planted to about two weeks earlier than the other plant. And these are considerably smaller. So big difference, really happy with the Oli Garden. I'll put a link for it down below if you wanna see which one I got. Been very happy with it. Beans are a replant, so these are bush beans. I had some bush bean seeds. I don't usually grow bush beans, but I had bush bean seeds I wanted to use up. So I have two rows of bush beans there. Onions back there, they're just going to seed and they'll reseed themselves. Horseradish not doing so well this year. It's pretty dry. And then these leeks back here are the ones that my rabbit ate multiple times. They have finally since gotten big enough and I have no idea what I'm doing with them. I have never grown them before, so they're kind of an experiment, but they look healthy. And then one of our local friends gave us a few extra Swiss chard plants, and they are also doing quite well. Carrots are just about at the end of their life, and I will be harvesting them shortly. The beans in this garden have not done well, and part of that has to do with how dry it has been here in upstate New York and hot, I should mention, for this month of July going into August. So they look really, really sad. I just fertilized them and I've been more consistently watering in them. They are looking a little bit healthier, but you'll see my other beans in the back. What a difference there is between the two plants. These are grown in sand and out there is clay and partial shade and they've done tremendously better. But on that note, our cucumbers have been doing much better. And this is our cucumber patch. We've been watering the cucumbers more. In fact, we're due to water these again, but they are done really well. We've already done 13 quarts of dill pickles, and I do believe we're gonna get at least another five or six more quarts. And they're, they're, these plants are covered in flowers. So we're just letting them go and whatever we get, we get. Uh, not many problems with cucumber beetles this year, which is a huge plus. Zinnias, Lydia's four o'clock and more zinnias, again, pollinators for the garden. And then over here, Brussels sprouts doing very well. I have been reading up on how to get them to get their little baby Brussels. And I do believe very shortly I will be removing these leaves, leaving only the little no nodules here. And that's what makes the baby Brussels sprouts. Again, I've never grown these before, so learning curve here. And then my cabbage, I harvested my first car cabbage here. I'm afraid I let it go too long because it actually split, split. But I cleaned it up, we ate it, it was absolutely delicious. And I think I have a couple more heads just about ready to go. The green has been more, oh, yep. Yeah. See, this one's just starting to split, so I need to harvest this guy. The red definitely is a little bit behind, but that's fine, because this gives me time to eat them. And you can see, this one does not have as much cabbage, um, cabbage moth damage as this one big big difference in fact this might have some slug damage as well so lessons learned how you should do these plants please cover your plants with bug netting it works so much better
my big mistake. Last week I planted two rows of beets here. So those should be up around the time these plants are done. So those will just go ahead and take over this section of the garden. And then I am also planning once these cabbages come out, I will be putting in more lettuce and broccoli right along here. The carrots that I had here, a mouse or a vole or a something, went ahead and ate all of the roots on them. This is a volunteer purple potato plant from two years ago. Every year I harvest it and I apparently still miss potatoes. So that's what this plant is here. And then I do have a few carrots here that the vole has yet to eat, but you know, it'll probably be gone shortly. For those of you who are new to our channel, we have a goal every year, well, last couple years, to reach uh, a certain amount out of our yard. And two years ago, I had made myself a goal of 500 pounds of produce. Not only did we surpass that goal, we reached, we doubled it, and we reached 1,042 pounds of produce from our garden, which was amazing. Last year, we didn't go quite reach that much. I think we were 700 and change. This year, we are already at 200 pounds. I went ahead and added that up because that is huge for me. And I think we're doing pretty good. I don't know that we're going to hit 1,000. Art says we will. I don't know. But I said that when we had the 1,000 pounds two years ago. We have a lot of pumpkins and squash and things like that. These spaghetti squashes are looking really beautiful. There's lots of them in here. So who knows? I've been having a lot of fun this year really working on fall planting. That is something that last year because I was pregnant with Hannah, bad bunny, there he goes again. I have a very naughty rabbit in this back garden. <laughs> but I have, last year I wasn't able to do any fall planting. I just didn't feel well enough. I was in that first trimester and just felt sick. So this year I'm really trying to take advantage of that and get some planting done. So we've already done some fall planting, but in these back gardens here, these, I don't think we're gonna have any room to do any fall planting. But the big exciting thing for us, this is a new grow item, are these watermelons. And I don't know if you can see them. There's one here on the outside. There's one there. I've got another one in here. Uh, where did I, there's a baby here. These are sugar babies and another variety. I'm not sure what it was because they were just seeds in my container that I threw on the ground. But we harvested our first watermelon. Oh, there's a big one right there. If you guys can see that right there. We harvested our first watermelon and <laughs> I don't know how to tell how to harvest watermelon. I've never grown these before and I YouTubed it and people have, there's lots of theories out there. I will say, unfortunately, mine was not ripe yet. It was edible, but it was just a tinge pink in the middle and it wasn't sweet. We still ate it and we enjoyed it, but it wasn't quite ripe. So we're letting these watermelons go a little bit longer because we think they need to go longer. But you can see there's two watermelons there. There's another watermelon here. So they seem to be producing really well. The zucchini always does really well out here. And then the celery has been doing really, I, I mean, I've never grown celery, but it seems to be doing pretty well. So, you know, again, pluses, successes in the garden, some not so good successes, but this has been fun. Indeterminate tomato plants. These things are over six feet tall. I have run out of sticks to stake them up. So if we get a storm, we're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna go over. The Swiss chard has been doing wonderfully. And the Brussels sprouts are also doing very well. Potatoes are coming to the end of their season. Uh, I'm gonna do a separate video on the harvest of these. So make sure you look for that in a couple weeks. You should be able to see that. But this has been a fun, fun experiment with the trash can potatoes. I think they're going to do well, but I don't know. I have a whole bunch of vine crops over here. I have acorn squash. I have Hubbard squash. I have a type of blue pumpkin or a squash. Let me see if I can find one of those. My parents grew these last year and they really winter up really nicely. So that's that guy right there. And I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> yeah, 
you know how things go. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh, there's another. Oh, you know what these are? These are those Tahitian squashes. I bet that's what that is because there's one there and there's one there. These things, last year, we had one that weighed 40 pounds. One, one fruit weighed 40 pounds. I'm not sure that's going to get that big this year. And let's see, what else do I have in here? There's a lot of things hanging. There's a butternut squash back there. And then I think that is a Hubbard squash. So if you watch any of my vlog videos that I put on, or if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that when I planted tomatoes in this particular garden, we knew there was a risk that that black walnut tree could pose a problem. And unfortunately, this month of July, it did. We have lost most of the tomatoes in this corner. They are ripening, but they are small um, just because the plants are not growing. And it affected not all of the plants, oddly enough. You saw those over there that are over six foot tall. They're okay, but it affected this variety and this variety and part of that variety back there. So, lessons learned. Tomatoes probably can't grow in here again. However, the uh, pumpkin or squash or whatever that's grown in there is, is taking full advantage of the garden out here. All right, little story about these tomatoes. A neighbor of mine had a friend give him some of these. They're called Milano. I have never had a Milano paste tomato. And so these were literally cut out of a tomato and dried and sent to my neighbor. My neighbor gave them to me last year. Unfortunately, they didn't produce well at all. However, this year, they have done outstanding. Okay, this is, I'm the same height as these tomatoes. Look how tall they are. <laughs> I'm five foot three inches. They are huge. And their tomato paste, the paste tomatoes themselves are also huge. Look at these. These are huge. This is the length of my hand. I mean, these guys are monstrous. I haven't tasted them yet, <laughs> still waiting, but I am excited about that. I have been doing a lot of research on saving seeds. I'm not sure about crossing. I haven't looked into tomatoes crossing, so I'm not sure if I can save those again for next year. I may, but it's been fun and I can't wait to taste them. These are the beans I planted three weeks later than the other beans. Look how healthy they look. These look phenomenal. And they are probably seven, maybe eight feet tall. And they're covered in beans. I've got to pick them again. So that is doing very well. This corner, we just ran out of time to plant in the spring, but Art kindly helped me get this redone. So we have planted more cucumbers. I'm hoping there's enough year left for them. Also have the peppers not doing so well i'm not sure why a couple of peppers there kale doing great back here and then over there i don't know if you guys can see them straight down our potatoes and art just cleared all that for me if i want to do any fall planting our blackberries are just coming to an end. Again, it was so dry this year. I want to show you guys how small these are. These are really, really small blackberries. Usually they're the, thi the size of your thumb. And these are just so tiny. Like this is, let's see, here's one. This is a big one right here. This is how they normally are. And most of them, are like that so can you see the difference and that's just lack of water right there lastly we have the orange garden and this has been very slow to produce this year still have my bug net on it seems to be working very well but this is another variety of cabbage finally finally surviving the slug damage after using the slug magic and by the way it is magic it worked very well some kale and then i also have beets which aren't doing well i did harvest a couple heads of broccoli they were small but it was still broccoli if you guys watched my past videos you know that i've had problems with rodents as well as the slugs the slugs were destroying those plants so the slug magic did work very well 
and I will definitely use that in future years because last year we tried using the beer which if you put the beer in the like the tuna fish cans that does work but I don't like to have it out where animals can get into it and things like that so the slug magic is an organic way of just putting um, the little granules around and the slugs it takes care of the slugs for me so that was definitely a win-win situation but that is everything that I have in my garden the peach trees did not produce this year so no peaches for us the grapes are still yet to be determined we're waiting for that but that is the status of my August garden thanks so much for coming along make sure you stay tuned because you'll be seeing my September garden and at the end of the year we will have a year-end total to see if we hit that thousand pound mark and if you want to see more up-to-date videos go to Instagram I post almost every single day over there everyday life gardening cooking the whole works and you can follow me over there again links down in the description I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you next time bye